Fun Facts presents the 1952 Cadillac Roadster, a 40s and 50s classic car. It is a third generation that was created in 1948 and had a production run through 1953. And our focus today is on the 5253 Cadillac Roadster. If you're excited, I'm excited. So let's get started now. Okay, the third generation Cadillacs was started in 1948 through 1953. So let's see if there's any fun facts here. The first all new post-war Cadillacs arrived in 1948. The sporting tail fins, the inspired by the Lockheed P-38 fighter plane on a Cadillac. The Series 62 Cadillacs had a slightly shortened wheelbase, but the track width was increased by two inches, increasing interior room. However, updated drivetrains would have to wait another year for the time being, and the new Cadillacs were still powered by the same 346 CID flathead V8 used across the board since 1941, which delivered only fair performance, zero to 60 in 16 seconds with a top speed of 93. Fuel mileage was an estimated 14 miles per highway and per gallon on the highway. 10 miles per gallon in the city with a hydromatic transmission. And probably fuel back then was about, what, seven cents a gallon, maybe. Which was rapidly becoming the norm. By 1949, only 10% of the Cadillacs were ordered with the three-speed manual gearbox. Series 62 production totaled 34,213 vehicles for the 1948 model year, accounting for 68% of Cadillac's value volume. The 1948 models had been slow to get into production and not arrive in showrooms until 1948, February. Consequently, Cadillac produced only 50,599 total vehicles for the abbreviated model year. The new Cadillac OHV V8 was the big news for 1949 with minor trim differences otherwise. The 331 cubic inch 5.4 liter engine produced 160 horsepower and weighed 200 pounds less than the old flathead V8, in addition to being shorter and lower. The 331 V8 horsepower could also handle higher compression levels to take advantage of improved higher octane post-war gasoline formulations. The major difference between the 61 series and the 62 series models of the similar body style was minor trim variations. The higher price series again had grooved front fender stone shields and bright rocker panel moldings. Chevrons below the taillights were no longer seen. The convertible was an exclusive offering and the heater was optional. Sales reached a record 55,643 units. The 1962 Coupe de Ville was introduced in late 1949, along with the Buick Roadmaster Riviera and the Oldsmobile 98 Holiday. It was among the first peerless hardtop coupes ever produced. It cost $3,496. It was only a dollar less than the Series 62 convertible. And like the convertible, it came with power window standard. It was luxurious, trim, and leather upholstered with chrome bows in the headliner to simulate the ribs of a convertible top. There were 55,643 Series 62s that were produced in 1942 out of the total volume, 92,554. For 1950, major styling changes were performed. 
The cars were lower and sleeker, with longer hoods, and one-piece windshields were fitted. Hydromatic transmissions were now standard. The 61 series was again a short wheelbase model, having been reduced to 122 inches. Sales set yet another record at 59,818 units. Full-length chrome rocker panels set off the 1951 model, and the Coupe de Ville was now parked, was now marked with noticeably improved trim, including Coupe de Ville script on the rear roof pillar. Sales were 81,844 or a record of over 74% of all Cadillacs sold. Popular mechanics reported about 12 miles per gallon at 45 miles per hour. In 1952, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Cadillac, wow, 50th anniversary, it's amazing. In 1952, the V-shaped hood and deck emblems were done as gold castings. The Series 62 sedan was also characterized by a higher rear deck lid contour. This provided additional luggage space. Backup lights were now standard equipment and were incorporated into the taillights. The grille wraparound panels were redesigned once again, having a broad chrome trim below the headlight with a, a side scoop styling and gold colored winged emblem mounted in the center. At the rear of the Cadillacs, adopted a through-the-bumper dual exhaust system. Deck ornamentation took the form of a Cadillac crest over a broad golden V. New standard features including self-winding clocks, improved directional sync signal indicators, <coughs> glare-proof mirrors, sonate treated pistons, and four-barrel carburation. <clears throat> Engine output was 330 was 331 up was up to 190 miles per hour. Excuse me. <clears throat> Engine output for the 331 was up to 190 horsepower. Sales fell to 70,255. But with the Series 61 out of the way, the Series 62 sales accounted for 78% of all the Cadillacs sold. Okay, here we are, finally. <clears throat> the 1953 Series 62 saw a redesigned grille with heavier integral bumper and bumper guards, the repositioning of the parking lamp directly under the headlights, the chrome eyebrow, the type headlamp doors, a one-piece rear window without division bars. Wheel discs were fashioned in an attractive new disc design. The Series 62 body styles were identified by a non-louvered rear fender and the use of a thin bright metal underscore on the bottom rear of the cars only and the decoration of both the hood and the deck lid with the Cadillac crest and V-shaped ornaments. The club coupe model disappeared. The two-door Series 62 were now all hardtops, including the better equipped Coupe de Ville or the convertibles. Another familiar name appeared on 1953's Series 62, the top of the line sub-series El Dorado was one of the three specialty convertibles produced in 1953 by General Motors, the other two being the Oldsmobile 98 Fiesta and the Buick Roadmaster Skylark. The Eldorado was a limited edition luxury convertible and would eventually become its own series. It, it featured a full assortment of deluxe accessories including wire wheels and introduced a wraparound windshield to Cadillac standard production and sales set a new record at 85,446 units. Well, if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your 
day to watch our video and if you like the video please give us a thumbs up because it really does help our channel and if you like our channel please subscribe because we'll be doing all the cars in the 50s we're going to start with all the american made cars and then we'll go into the foreign made cars the most popular foreign made cars in the 50s then we'll go into the 60s american cars foreign cars 70s american cars foreign cars 80s I think we'll just carry that theme for a while and it might take a couple of years before we get through that far. So there's a lot of cars. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And what I'm trying to do is, you know, showcase the interior and the motors because we're just, face it, we're just not going to go find a 1952 or 53 Cadillac and be able to open the hood to see the motor or even open up the, the front door and jump in and see the, the dashboard. So I think the interiors and the motors are kind of the fun part of what I'm showcasing. So again, thanks for taking the time out of your day. Love to see you when we upload our next video and always, always, always take good care.